All right, that's the most intimidating one done with, in that it was the one where I was like, what the actual hell is happening here? And then it turned out, I just needed the confidence to succeed. You could say the key gave me the confidence to succeed and wasn't actually necessary, but I thought it was necessary uh, in that really just once the plant, once the seed was planted, that's what, just what felt necessary. Uh, what happened is I saw that one classroom area that's like, go get your key in order to use stuff. Then I saw a terminal that's like, you need your key to use this terminal. I was like, okay, this sets up the idea that I need this thing called the key. Then I went to specifically the third and fourth areas that I've solved. And those areas just were so blatantly like, here's a bunch of machine stuff that doesn't work and isn't powered. So I was like, oh, I need my key. Because that's like the logical thing. Like, oh, I've been told I need the key to do things. So let's go find the key. So when it's stuff that doesn't seem to be working, I was like, okay, I guess I just got to keep going until I find, you know, the key. And then that stuff will make more sense. But now that I've gone through those places after getting the key, the key does not seem to actually do anything in said chapters, aside from it to be very useful for taking notes. So that part's nice. But yeah, the needing the key to specifically power stuff hasn't been as relevant. Especially the last chapter, where I thought the key must be somehow used in powering that stuff, or there must be some way to power everything, or some sort of, you know, just something that powers something somewhere. And instead, there did not seem to be anything of the sort. Aha! So now I need to go back to ch solving this chapter and figure out what the hell's going on here. But I think I actually kind of have an idea. So we'll see. Because the main loose end I have is that I saw that journey cloth and... Excuse me. And it was up above one of these things. the idea would be these things are building up pressure and once you close every single one of them they'll slam open again and so it's probably what I need to do is just do that but with the last one in place am I missing something here that's the waterfall that's the waterfall because there really isn't a lot of other elements in this environment to deal with so the slam thing's probably the thing at the time, I think I was kind of thinking that there might be a, a correct order to use them in. Like if you step on them in a specific order, something happens. It's probably way more straightforward than that, which is just that you get knocked up there. I don't know, maybe when you close the mold, this is the steam buildup will be so strong that it pushes me up. Or maybe if I push that one last, then the part where the lids slam open will knock me up. Let's test this. Is that all of them yet or not? Whoa, okay. That was cartoonish. You, I would not want to do that. There we go. We got you. Where do I go from here though? Shit. Now I've just got the minor issue of how did that didn't actually help me solve the puzzles, did it? What do I actually do in this environment? Hmm. I guess consider the possibility of being shot into the air via one of the other ones. This one seems to only be a way of getting a journey cloth and not necessarily something that's specifically useful to me. Where do the other ones point? Oh, that's probably it, right? That one, that one's over a, a ledge. Yeah, I'd bet on that. Do. I think this has happened a few times to me in Myst games where it's just overwhelming and disorienting and confusing and you don't know what the rules are of the environment or what to look for in a solution. So you kind of just poke everywhere. And then once you've seen everything, you're like, okay, now I've seen everything. The solution has to be within the realm 
of the things that I actually see in front of me now. And from there, you're like, okay, I've eliminated the idea of there being more things. So, how did these things pose a solution instead? But until you think you've seen all the things, you don't know what to do. And, like, do ages interact with each other? Maybe. They certainly did in Abduction. And especially when you're thrown into the crazy idea of, like, a an MMO version, you're like, I have no idea what I'm dealing with here. What might be necessary, or whether or not there's a correct order, or what. This game just dumps you in, and they're like, hey, here's like eight books. Uh, uh. <laughs> Probably go somewhere. Let's find out. I think that's all of them. After you. Ooh, that was a close one. I used to wear tie-dye shirts a lot as a kid. And zero as an adult, or even a teenager. Although I did make one, like a year ago. My, uh... My dad and my stepmom are in like the kind of age group where they start doing like white people arts and crafts whenever they uh have like an anniversary or a party. They'll be like, let's do weird oil paintings, let's do tie-dye shirts and things like that. Blah 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 blah. Alright, I guess we'll just leave those like that forever unless they give me a reason not to do otherwise. That just lets me hop right over this place. But I made a mistake, because I I, I had to- I don't own white shirts to do that stuff with, so I just grabbed one and did it, and then after doing it, I'm like, Oh, that came out alright. I like that idea. Uh, it was of a size that was basically unwearable. <laughs> uh, because it did not- it's way too small for me. It's- a, it only really works as like an undershirt for like, sleeping or something. And on top of that, uh, the, most of the dye just came out in the wash anyway. So it didn't- it wasn't as permanent as hoped. Hello. Oh, that looks weird. Oh. <laughs> that transition does not look nice. Like, here's vague low-res wall rock textures. Okay, and here's vague low-res floor texture. And then here's a really sharp cartoonish border between the two. That's where things start to look really weird. <laughs> Here's a moment to talk about something, though. A reoccurring thing on this channel is the columnar jointing, the basalt columns, and stuff like that. This is mud cracks. This is formed in basically the same process as the, uh, the fabled joints that are columned. Or, I, I, the columns that are jointed, I mean, whatever. Uh, it's way less regular. It might be because the mud is more irregular and also because the mud is softer than basalt is, so that might be why basalt cracks in such geometric patterns. But the same idea exists. This is this is all mud, because it was or it was mud when it was wet, and then as the water dries, it contracts. The water's no longer taking up space in the mud, so all the mud is contracting. But how do you contract when you're a giant continuous sheet that goes on for meters or even miles? It's not like the entire top layer of uh, it's not like the entire layer of mud can just contract uniformly, like underwear shrinking in the in the dryer or something like that. Like it's going to, it's all localized and it's not a uniform thing. So as it contracts, it just cracks because it just it, the surface tension ri raises and it can't all physically retract onto itself. So as it contracts, the surface tension rises and it just kind of cracks in vaguely geometric patterns, way less consistent than a uh, basalt. And I'm guessing it's because of hardness, but I haven't really thought about it that much. Uh, it's probably just the sheer hardness and consistency and the fact that this is not one uniform rock. It's kind of just a vague mush that was wet and now is not. And that's that's why it cracks around like that. Uh, and all over the place too. And that's also why the, because the softness is not only why the shapes are all irregular probably, but also why you have these cracks that just kind of end. It's like, eh. This contracted that way, this part contracted that way, this part kind of didn't really come apart, but since that was contracting that way and that was contracting that way, it kind of just cracked down the middle and 
that was enough to resolve the tension. And if the tension's resolved, it stops. And that's how all that shit works. And it's really weird how there's just such a hard transition of the... of the frock type. I'm not sure why the geology just, like, it just changes. Oh, wait, no, it's probably... This is probably just actually mud right now. I'm guessing those formed and then the water managed to sort of rise up. Because like, this actually, yeah, it looks like a coastline. This looks like a coastline around the water bank. So the water may have risen up and sort of re-muddied the area around here. And it might still be damp around here and so on. I'm not really sure why it'd be so cons such, a, such a sharp border, though, with even having a shadow under it. Honestly, I'm guessing that somebody wasn't really geologically inclined and they just kind of just drew stuff. Like, they're probably, they, they might even be thinking, that's the desert. That's why it's mud cracked. And this is not the desert, so that's why it doesn't look like mud cracked. Stingray! Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey. Meanwhile, this the soil under the water here has such harsh shadows and is so starkly lit. It looks like surface soil that wouldn't be underwater. And yet, it, and it, it's underwater. In fact, this looks like surface soil, and this looks like the bottom of a pond. So it's like a weird back-and-forth contradiction, strangely. Ooh, you can go behind the waterfall. If I can manage. There we go. Hey, creepy dark opening. What do you do? Oh, it's like a furnace. Oh, yeah, it is it is a furnace. And maybe a light source in my case. Did it it kind of lit things up in here, didn't it? Maybe not. I think it, maybe a little bit. Whereas this is all, yeah, this is all mud, and this is just big old lumpy solid rocks that are in the local area. Neat. Yeah, it definitely lights up a bit. I'm not sure if there's much to do around here, though, besides light them up in this particular cave. Well, what's up with that? Why is there a creepy, like, bite? <laughs> it looks like someone bit the wall. Probably get the entire dental record of that person. Or a dental match. Although, it, that's supposed to be bad science, isn't it? I think I've heard about that. Uh, is this going to transition to a, a new location? Uh, uh, I don't like this. All right, I can't see shit. I'm stopping. Maybe there's a way of getting us a light source I can transport, or lighting the place up better. But I didn't, I didn't see a light source when I was in there, so I'm not in a hurry to go any further. Let's, we'll keep that in mind for later, and see if I can find a way to be able to actually see in there. Look at that. Is it safe down there, I wonder? Now look at those cracks. Those are interesting. Are they the same cracks, you think? No, these seem way more low res and cartoony and they're... They go straight from, like, mud texture to pure black. Maybe hand-drawn cracks? Whereas that's a detailed rock texture. Uh, it doesn't look amazing up close, but... From this distance, there's a lot of detail. You can see into the depth of the cracks. And you can see a lot of detail inside there. The way that it's plastered all over the rocks doesn't necessarily make sense, but... It's a... You know, there's at least depth to the texture itself. And those are just giant-ass dinosaur bones. Or, or an equivalent. Where do you take me? There's a linking book in this age.
Hello. Where have we found ourselves? What are those? What are those? Ah. It's the Reapers. <laughs> the Reapers have come to Earth. Mankind's fall has begun. Oh, look at him. He's like just kind of picking around. Grubbing. Do their tails latch onto the opening of the cave and let them like hang down and scavenge a bit or something? More columns. They like the rock columns in the Mist franchise, don't they? Those are handcrafted too. That's uh, that's of the form of like architect that mimics uh, architecture that that mimics natural beauty. It's supposed to look kind of like uneven and and weirdly distributed and whatnot, but they are straight up like vertical rock pillars with sheer sides. So they are like carefully handcrafted. Yeah, this all has like a rock guard, like a Japanese rock garden sort of feng shui feel to it. Where everything here is supposed to look kind of natural, but also incredibly false and artificial and cultivated. To the point of the trees looking so strange. Lots of evidence of largely unreadable font. This looks like, this looks military in nature. Like there's a robot, the Daleks are here, and there's the army people and they're in the costumes that maybe I was in earlier. That might be the slave labor right there. The, the paintings are old and being lost to the elements. Okay, I have to call that out. That's... Whoa, that's tripping me out. You guys noticing how it feels like the roof is super low? The skybox is weirdly close to us vertically than normal. To the point where if I look around a bit, you can kind of get a sense that it's a that it's a flat plane that's kind of close to me. Whereas skyboxes are normally way farther apart. This one looks like it might be just above the top of this cavern. Or this uh, valley. Like it almost looks like that's like that might almost clip through it if it went a little higher. I don't know how to voice what that's like. It's just there's something about the perspective that makes it feel like the sky is really close to me. Which makes this feel claustrophobic. It weirdly feels like I'm in a, like a shark tube, like at the, uh, like they have at a, like a, a, an aquarium and whatnot, where you walk through the hallway and the hallway is just glass and, and like, look at all the, all the sharks and stuff like that. Like it feels artificially low. What are you guys? Am I supposed to be worried about you guys? Is it getting darker? Oh, it's getting way darker right now. This is creepy. It's like a storm's coming. Oh, hey. Wow. Way to punctuate me saying that, huh? You guys aren't dangerous, right? You silverfish or whatever you are? What are you guys? They don't seem to have mouths. They seem to be scraping stuff up from the walls. And also, stuff doesn't really tend to be dangerous in mist games. Ah, the rocks got shiny when wet. Like you'd expect. That's about normal too. That kind of smooth, porous rock can be surpri get surprisingly shiny really fast. Does this area have like a? Huh. There's nice little gazebos to keep you out of the rain. A concern that goes go, comes to mind right away is, is this storm cycle part of a puzzle? Because that'd be a very time-consuming amount of waiting if said waiting was incorporated into a puzzle. Hello, already? Already found this guy, huh? So I know where to go when I'm done with that. Done raining already. Hello, Morrowind. How you doing? Oh, they're creepy looking. 
Hello, brain trees. I touch you. Okay, things got weird. Things got pretty weird. Hey. Look at them go. Might be a chance to look at you up close. Not that close. Yeah, they definitely seem to have a tail that lashes onto the edge of the pit. Help them just kind of poke down and scavenge away at whatever they're doing. I wonder if they tend this garden at all. Because, like, the Denise should have... Oh, what the hell? Eh. They're just lewdly, like, just jizzing everywhere. I wonder if the uh, creatures tend the garden at all, because the Denise should have been gone a while ago. But this place looks like it's kept, like, now. Big ol' spinning tablet? <clears throat> how, are, how are you floating? Magnetism? Something other that levitate? Hello. Well, I'm curious. I've already found a page here, right? Are we overlooking a familiar spot here? Yeah, traffic cones. So I'm directly on top of the classroom I keep going to. I can't jump up there. Yeah, you can't really make that jump. And there's not really much around here. It's just... It's just a roof. I can't even jump down, can I? Do you offer me any kind of perspective? Like the top of an area? I kind of wonder if a lot of these books... These strange homemade pages that lead to almost nonsensical locations, if some of them might have been, like, practice. Like, this location's odd. And I can almost imagine somebody was, like, using it to, like, practice making pages, basically. Or maybe they were spying on people. Maybe they specifically put it there because they needed to use that roof to spy on people. You're your own age, huh? Is that the takeaway? How does that work for the number of pages I have? Or the amount of palm I have? That's a full, that's a full spiral of green. Like, I have all five now. Huh. This will take me right to a page. I can touch it again to double check. If it's currently a full spiral of green, then these two ages have the same journey. Yeah. See, that, may that makes things weird again. There's two separate ages in this game, and those two separate ages share one journey. Curious about that. Am I going back to that one again, or is that one just that one zone? I didn't see a lot other to do there. But I do want a light source. Yeah, I want a light source to explore that one cave. We gotta remember that. I'm not done with that part. You look like you might be a little closer. 
Hey, you're pretty close. Yeah, the closer you get, the more not super creepy they are. They're odd, though. Is it just scraping away looking for things to eat or something? Or, like, what does it do? They're just an odd sight. They're really, like, doughy and soft-looking for bugs. Like, they weirdly look like they have the fleshy... Yeah. They kind of look like they have, like, the fleshy consistency that a lot of the creatures in Subnautica have, for example. That might just be the time it came from, though. I don't know, I saw stuff from back then that it looked like it was more chitinous and whatnot. So maybe they're supposed to look kind of doughy instead of like something that has an exoskeleton. After all, they're not insects from Earth, they're like aliens. Huh. There's a sun up here, there's structures up here, there's gears underneath. If it's a sun up there and an overhead, maybe this is supposed to look like it's too close to me. This this sea, this sky. Maybe I am in a weird artificial Zen garden. That's like in that. Maybe that's a picture where I am, like instead of a dome. I'm also finding these without solving puzzles, like the. The air pressure puzzle is the closest thing to a puzzle so far in this zone. Otherwise, it's just a really neat looking area. So I'm curious what's going on there. Spread, spread everywhere. Impregnate the world. This freaky, aren't they? I must spew the grossness absolutely everywhere until. Oh, here comes the rain again. Another one, huh? Really? Wait, it's only two to go. Do you guys react? No, he's, he looks the same as he did not during the water. Not during the rain. Just kind of picking away. Like he doesn't care. 